Again, my name is Gwen Sorley, and today we will be discussing play attention and how we can customize a neurocognitive training plan to improve executive function and self-regulation. Now, as I look through the list of attendees today, I see a lot of familiar names. So there are a lot of you who have been to some of our webinars in the past. And you know that when we do webinars, we typically talk about ADHD and some area of executive function. And we always talk about tips and strategies that you can use to help improve organization or time man management or perhaps emotion regulation. We always have some type of strategy that you can hopefully incorporate into your day-to-day -day life. Today, we're going to go a little bit further because we want you to have those tips and strategies. Those are important tools to have in your tool chest. However, in order for those tips and strategies to be beneficial, we have to get to the root cause. We have to make certain that we are helping you develop the specific cognitive skills that lay the foundation for strong executive function and allow you to utilize those, those tips and strategies so that they actually benefit you. Let me give you an example. I was talking to uh, a woman a couple of days ago, and she mentioned that she uses a to-do list. She said every single morning, she starts her day with a to-do list. But she said by the end of the day, she has not checked off anything from that to-do list. So she knows how to do a to-do list, how to create that. She knows that's one of those strategies. But if you think about all of the skills you need in order for that to-do list to be beneficial, right? She needs to be able to pay attention to the to-do list. First, she even has to remember, right? We have to improve memory so that you remember you have a to-do list. And then we need to sustain your attention so that you're able to focus on each section of the to-do list. We have to teach you how to start a task right away so that when you see number one on your to-do list, there's not a lot of procrastination that you're able to jump in and start that task, but then not just start the task, but we have to make certain that you're able to filter distractions so that you can stay on that one task until you complete it. We have to make certain we work on impulse control so that you don't start number one and impulsively go down to number five. There are so many skills that we need to have in order for that one strategy to be beneficial. So that's what we really focus in on play attention. We look at those foundational cognitive skills that right now may be weak for you, but are required for strong executive function. And some of you might relate to this even more so with your child. How many of you here, and you can use the raise your hand icon, how many of you here have a child who has a 504 plan? Any of you? Okay, a lot of you are raising your hands. And as you raise your hands, give me, if you can, type in that chat box some of the accommodations that you may currently have. And you can even tell me if they're um, truly successful or not. Okay. Many of you are writing a variety. Um, KM says extra time on tests. And David says, extra time. And so a lot of you are saying, oh, Tanisha, frequent breaks. Good. Carol, sit in front. You know, a very common one that keeps coming up is the extra time. And, you know, I started using play attention back in 1996 when I was in a classroom setting. And oftentimes, one of the accommodations was giving them extra test time, right? Now, Unless we pair that with cognitive skill training, it's very difficult for them to get maximum benefit. 
Because if I give one of my students longer test taking time, but I don't simultaneously start to teach that student how to sustain his attention to the test, how to start that test right away, how to filter the distractions in the room, how to remain on task until he actually completes it, how to control his impulsivity so he's not just rushing through and making careless errors. Unless I help him develop those cognitive skills, then the longer test taking time often turns into just more time to daydream. And so we have to make certain that in order to make those accommodations successful, we are teaching those cognitive skills that they need in order to be successful. So we specialize in one thing. And that one thing is that we help you reach your goals. And we do this through a customized neurocognitive training plan. Now you are all here for a goal, right? You all have a goal in mind. So tell me now, type in the chat box. Are you here because you're a parent and you want to help your child be more successful in the classroom? Or you're a parent and you want to help your child be able to start and complete homework in a timely manner. Maybe you're here because you're an adult and you just want to be more productive at work. Or you're a clinician and you want to help your clients improve executive function. Or maybe you're here for all of the above. Go ahead and type in, Tanisha says, all of the above. Uh, let me know why you're here. Jeff says he is a parent with ADHD and, ha uh, and has a husband and three boys with severe ADD and ADHD. Mackenzie, all of the above. Lorraine, all of the above. Uh, Pilar, I wanted to help students do better in school and all of the above. Ron says help a 12 year, uh, Rona, sorry, help a 12 year old child. Uh, Abdel is here because I would like to improve my executive function. Monique is an adult and wants to be more productive in her personal life and she's retired. Excellent. Uh, Nicole, adults that need help taming the chaos in my brain and a parent of an ADHD ch a child who's struggling. Uh, KM, wanting to help child with time management, organization, and strengthen memorizing skills. Gina, single mom with ADHD and son with ADHD and kicked out of school. Okay, Gina. So our goal there may be to help him develop these skills so that eventually he'll be able to go back into the school setting. Uh, Christy, help myself with better focus. Uh, Nancy, employee with Student Disability Center at College University, higher learning uh, techniques for clients. Excellent. Deborah, I have ADD and I have minimal executive function. Steven, I'm an adult with ADD. Uh, Prudence, I'm here with a child with severe mental health issues. Uh, Lucia, parent who wants to inspire child who's now actually a working man who wants to improve, but still shy to try. Uh, Steven, uh, ADD affects my relationships with family, performance, and work. Absolutely. Brenda, I am here. Uh, I am a parent with a teen with ADHD and executive function disorder. And at his school, they keep telling me the same thing. He cannot concentrate or make correct choices. Well, right because he has ADHD. So now what path can we take, right? That's the important thing. You know that he has ADHD. So you know that he cannot concentrate and make correct choices. So now we have to make a very systematic plan so that he can develop those skills, right? And that's what we can do. Now, many of you I noticed said that you are a parent with ADHD, and you also have a child with ADHD. And that's very common. You know, it's very rare that when we're working with a family, we only work with one family member. Usually we're working with at least one child and one parent, if not the whole family. And, you know, what we find oftentimes is that 
a lot of times parents will say, I had no idea what I was struggling with until my child was diagnosed. And then it all made sense. So it's important for all of you who are here as a family to keep in mind, play attention is appropriate. And we can customize a plan for any age from five years old all the way up through 105. So we can even get the grandparents involved. So remember that it is a program that can be customized for each family member. And we can make certain that we can help you reach your goals. So I am glad you're here. And so many of you typed in a lot more. And um, it, I do appreciate your feedback. I can't read all of them, but please do keep your comments coming. So our goal to help you reach your goals, we're going to do this by customizing a neurocognitive training plan so that Stephen can have better relationships with his family, so that Lucia can help her child, um, who is now a working man, um, improve his skills, so that Deborah can improve her executive function. The customized plans are what we'll do in order to help you reach these goals. And we know that we can do this because we've been doing this for almost 30 years now. Uh, we were actually the pioneers in neurocognitive training. We invented the genre back in the 1980s. It was our founder, Peter Freer, who was working with children and adults with attention difficulties and weak executive function. And he really wanted to have a comprehensive program to help these individuals succeed. So he started researching different attention training techniques. And he came across the work that Dr. Pope and Dr. Paulson were doing at NASA. And what they were doing was that they were integrating feedback technology with their simulator training. So that means while their pilots and astronauts were doing their simulator training, they were monitoring the brain states of those individuals. And as long as the pilot or the astronaut was in their peak attentive state, then all of their controls were easy to use. They were automatic almost. However, if they started getting distracted or stressed or inattentive or anxious, then all of the modules, all of their controls became very sluggish and it became harder to do their job. So what these individuals were learning, they were learning how to keep in the zone, how to maintain their maximum level of attention while doing their job. And the founder of the company thought, that is brilliant. If I can integrate feedback technology and show my students their attentive state in real time while helping them develop skills and change behaviors, then I have a comprehensive program. So that is the very foundation of play attention. So what makes us unique and effective is what we teach and how we teach it. Play attention is the only program available that integrates feedback-based technology with cognitive skill training and behavior shaping to provide you with the most comprehensive approach available. So you see our body wave technology on the screen. Some of you may have seen this in the past or on our website, but let me show you this. Here's the body wave armband. On the back, there are three sensors here. Okay, so this simply rests on your arm and those three sensors monitor your brain activity that tells us how attentive you are. And then that information is given over to the computer where you're allowed to control all of the cognitive exercises just with your mind or more specifically, your attention alone. And you receive constant and immediate feedback as to whether or not you truly are focused and paying attention. And that's a really important first step in the learning process because right now, if you look at your child or your client or your partner and you say, I need you to pay attention, what do you typically hear back? I wanna see if you're hearing the same thing I was hearing when I was a classroom teacher. If you say, I need you to pay attention, 
What do they typically say back to you? Go ahead and type in those responses in the chat box. <laughs> Many of you are typing the same thing I was hearing. So Deborah, KM, Tanisha, Nicole, Carol, Lorraine, Monique, you're all saying it. Louisa, I am. I am paying attention. Lucia says, but I was. Exactly. Carol says, if someone asks me, I say, I am paying attention. So even as an adult, we think we're paying attention, right? We honestly think we're paying attention, but we just haven't developed what it takes in order to stay very attentive to low stimuli activity for long periods of time. So what we're able to do through neurotechnology is we're able to take that very abstract concept and make it concrete. We provide you with an experience. And that is so important because I'm going to put a poll up on the screen and I want you to uh, tell me, okay, you should see this poll on the screen and I want your, oh, no, I don't want to do that poll. That was the wrong poll. <laughs> Let me do this poll. Here we go. This is the poll I wanted you to see right now. So if you see that poll on the screen, how do you or your children or your students learn best? Is it through lecture or is it through hands-on experiential learning? You can just plug your answer in on the screen or you can type it in the chat box if some of you are on your phone and you, and you don't see it on the screen. How do you, your ch children or your students learn best? Is it through lecture or hands-on experiential? Okay, so I'm going to close the poll in three, two, one. Wow, a hundred percent of you who responded said hands on experiential. So isn't that amazing? Most of us learn best if we're provided an experience. Unfortunately, when we try to teach attention, we try to do it through lecture. Right? We say, sit still, eyes on me, pay attention, and we try to tell them what to do. But that's not really effective, is it? Because you've probably been doing that for years and it hasn't worked. But now with play attention, we can actually provide an experience where they experience what it means to pay attention. So that means that all of our cognitive exercises, no matter what you're working on, whether it is working memory or task completion or auditory processing, you have to be actively engaged because all of those exercises are brain enabled. You have to be paying attention in order to activate the activity. If you're not paying attention, then the activity will stop or the character will go in the wrong direction and you have to focus back in in order to continue. Just like those pilots and astronauts with NASA had to be in their peak attentive state in order to keep, keep that simulator going very easily, you have to keep your peak attentive state in order to practice all of these different cognitive skills. And the reason we do this is because we know the very first catalyst necessary for brain change is attention. You can have a great teacher. You can have a great counselor or therapist or life coach. But if you are having a hard time paying attention to that individual or that process, it's going to be very difficult for you to get maximum benefit. So that's why we make certain that no matter what you're working on, you are actively engaged so that you are going to get maximum benefit and you are going to be able to transfer and generalize what you're learning during the session back into the classroom or the workplace or the home. Okay, so there are very specific catalysts necessary for brain change. Because remember, our end goal is to create new neural pathways. We have to spark brain change, right? Brain change doesn't just happen. There are very certain catalysts that need to be in place in order to spark that brain change. One is attention, which obviously we incorporate into play attention, utilizing that neurotechnology. 
The second catalyst that we incorporate that is necessary for brain change is challenge. You can come into a learning situation and you can be 100% successful. But if you're 100% successful, you're not going to learn anything because you already have learned it. You've mastered it. You're 100% successful. So in order for you to learn, in order to spark that brain change, you have to be challenged. So we have what's called an auto-adjust algorithm within our program. And when you put that body wave armband on, we're only looking at your best ability to pay attention. And the bar is set there. That's where your baseline is set. Now, if you're able to reach or exceed that level of attention, then you're able to activate the activity. If you're able to maintain that level of attention for a given number of seconds in the background, we raise the bar just a little bit. Now you have to be that more attentive in order to be successful. So we're constantly challenging you. We're constantly making certain that we're bringing you up to higher levels of achievement. Now, the opposite is true, too, because I'm sure some of you are sitting here thinking, well, I hope it's not frustrating, too challenging where it's frustrating because my child's already frustrated at school and I don't want her to come to this situation and be frustrated as well. So we know the opposite is true too, right? We need challenge, but also if you're 100% frustrated, you're not going to be successful and you're not going to spark brain change. So the opposite is true as well. If you start getting fatigued or you cannot reach that same level of attention, we bring that bar back down to your last successful level, and then we gradually build you up again. So we are always keeping you at a challenging yet success-based pace. Now also, deliberate practice. This is the third catalyst required for brain change that we incorporate into play attention. Deliberate practice means that when you come into this learning set situation, there is a specific goal set for higher levels of achievement. Because it's not enough for you just to show up, right? Just show up and do your play attention session. That's not enough. That's not good training. You need to show up and have a very specific goal that you are going to work to achieve. And our artificial intelligence, sheer genius, actually will set mini goals for you based on your previous performance. So you can see how the customization is continued throughout the program. We are always looking at your best ability to pay attention and we're challenging you. We're looking at your last level of performance and we're setting a mini goal so that you have a deliberate practice model. So you may come into your session and Sheer Genius will say, uh, David, yesterday you completed attention stamina with 70% attention. Today, let's try 72%. So we set that goal so that you're always working towards higher levels of achievement. So again, the three catalysts required for brain change, attention, challenge, and deliberate practice. And those are all incorporated into play attention. Now, we've been doing this integration of feedback technology with cognitive skill training and behavior shaping for about 30 years. But Tufts University School of Medicine wanted to know, is that integration important? Or can we just give you a series of cognitive exercises or what you hear a lot about as brain games and get the same results? So they went into the Boston Public School District and they had three different groups of students all identified as ADHD. The first group received play attention, so they had full integration. The second group received just cognitive exercises, so brain games on the computer, no feedback technology, and no behavior shaping. And the third was their control, so they received no intervention at all. And at the end of the study, the play attention students were the only students that showed global improvements in all areas, including academic, social, behavioral, and executive function. They were also the only students that if they started the study and they were on medication, 
because some of the students were on, some of them were not. But if they were on medication and they were in the play attention group, the play attention students had an average decrease in their medication where the other two groups had an average increase. And that goes back to skill building. If we can help you develop the skills that right now are weak, there may be less of a necessity to mask those symptoms. So again, that integration we do, feedback technology with cognitive skill training and behavior shaping is really the most comprehensive approach you can find. Now, if you do want uh, copies of those studies, many of you here probably like to review research, just type in Tufts and I'll make certain that we follow up and send you an email with those uh, studies. If you'd like to review those, just type in Tufts and I'll make certain that you get a follow up with those studies. Now, I've been talking a lot about feedback, but I want to explain a little bit further what I mean by that feedback. Um, so this is one of my clients. This is John. And you'll notice that he has that body wave armband on. And so this is where I wanted to do that uh, other uh, poll here. So this poll, before I talk to you about the feedback, I want to make certain that we are all on the same page. So if you see that poll on your screen, please let me know. What does that body wave armband monitor? Is it A, eye movement, B, breathing, C, brain activity, or D, FM radio? If you don't see the poll, you can just type it in. Is it A, eye movement, B, breathing, C, brain activity, or D, FM radio? All right, excellent. This is a good group. Very good. Excellent. 99% of you responded correctly. It is brain activity. Remember that body wave armband is monitoring your brain activity that tells us how attentive you are. Now, with this exercise that you see my client doing, you notice that he sees a submarine. Now, this is called attention stamina, this particular activity. We're teaching him how to direct and sustain his attention at will, much like being able to pay attention to the teacher in the classroom or your colleagues in the workplace. So it starts out with that uh, submarine at the top of the screen. Once he's focused and paying attention, he's able to push that character down to the bottom of the ocean just with his mind, or more specifically, his attention alone. And he now knows this is what it means to pay attention. This is my attentive state. Remember, that's the experience we were talking about. Now, if he gets distracted, and distraction can be a variety of things. It could be that he starts to daydream. It could be that someone walks into the room and he can't filter that noise. Or maybe he starts a self-distracting behavior like fidgeting or starts to become anxious, immediately that character will start to float up because he's no longer as attentive. And then he has to control that behavior, control that daydreaming, focus back in, in order to push it back down to the bottom of the ocean. So you can think of it as kind of like a piece of exercise equipment for the brain. We're working areas that right now are weak for you. And by providing you with that constant and immediate feedback regarding your attentive state, you're able to develop that self-regulation and self-monitoring you need to not only recognize when you're paying attention, but also recognize when you're not paying attention. And more importantly, since you've had this opportunity to practice directing and sustaining your attention, you're going to be able to correct it at will because you have had that opportunity to practice it, to learn it, to master it. So this is really empowering, especially if you've been told for years, you can't pay attention, you never pay attention. Now you actually see that you are able to pay attention, that this is something that 
you can control. So if we go back to what Brenda was saying earlier with her, a teenager, and the school is just saying, well, he can't concentrate. Great. Because he has ADHD, he has a hard time directing and sustaining his attention. Now we have a systemized approach to teach him that skill. And I know that many of you are looking at the graphics here and thinking, well, that seems very simple. And that is about as exciting as our graphics get. And uh, the reason we do this is because we know if we give you something high stimuli, like a video game or something of high interest, and you can tell me, raise your hand if you have a child who struggles to pay attention at school, but he can come home and play video games for hours and never move. And that is very common. You know, ADHD, we hear so much about attention deficit, and that's really a misnomer. There is no one with a complete deficit of attention. If you are very interested in something or if it's of high stimuli, you can hyper-focus in those situations. So we don't need to teach you how to pay attention to high stimuli. What we need to teach is what's more difficult, and that's how to pay attention to low stimuli much like the classroom teacher who cannot possibly compete with that high stimuli. Deborah says, you mean we're not lazy or just not trying hard enough? That's exactly what I mean. That's exactly what I mean. We know that you're all working really hard. Now we just need to give you the tools in order to do all of this at will. Now, these are all of the different cognitive skills that we can address within your program. So the very first exercise you saw there was attention stamina. And you see there are several different cognitive areas that we can address. You're not going to need all of these. This is where the customization comes in. Once we learn you, once we're able to assess your particular needs or your child's needs or your client's needs, then we can customize a plan. But remember, the powerful thing is Every single exercise is brain enabled. You control that exercise with your attentive state. Now, the core program includes the foundations of executive function. So I just want to touch on these and explain why we're working on each of these exercises, because each one has an educational correlate so that we can apply what we're learning in other areas. Attention stamina, we talked about being able to direct and sustain your attention. Visual tracking, this is a great one. If you have um, a child and the teacher says, you know, she does great when I stand right next to her. But as soon as I walk away, she's out the window and out the door, and then she has that diffused attention. So we're going to work on staying focused and visually tracking that teacher as he or she moves about the room. Task completion. This is probably one of our most popular ones. This is a great one if you have a child and 15 minutes of homework is taking two or three hours. Or you're an adult and you think, I was busy all day and I finished nothing. Right? That ability to start that task right away, keep your attention on that task until completion, closed end tasking. Short term memory that's the ability to remember dates, names, facts. Filtering distractions, again, attention deficit, a misnomer. You have great attention. The problem is you're paying attention to bits and pieces of everything. So we're going to teach you how to stay focused and filter out all of that unnecessary stimuli. Then transfer and generalization with our academic bridge. And this is really exciting because this is where you will actually do your real homework or your work from the office while connected to the body wave armband. Because we're remember, we're not monitoring where your eyes are. We're monitoring how attentive you are. So as long as you're paying attention to your reading or your spreadsheet or your report, you're able to hear from the computer, good, great. If you start to get distracted, you'll hear focus. And then you know you're not in that state you need to be in in order to complete the assignment in a timely manner. So this, again, is where we're asking you to take all of the skills you've learned within play attention and apply them 
to your real work. And we can adjust this as needed. I've recently been working with an adult and she's a high school English teacher and she's been struggling with grading papers. It takes her two days on the weekend to grade papers just because she's been having such a difficult time maintaining her attention to it. And so we've been incorporating Academic Bridge. And through that immediate feedback, she's learned things that she thought were helping her. They're not helping her. She's learned about how to regain her attention when she recognizes that she's drifting. She's learned about things in the environment that are distracting her. So she has really worked hard developing this awareness and maintaining her attention to that particular task. And now she's down to two hours on the weekend instead of two days on the weekend. So that's why we say, you know, let's improve these skills, improve executive function and stop working so hard. You know how to do the task. Now we just need to develop those skills so that you can do them and complete them in a timely manner. Uh, KM says task completion needs improvement 100%. And uh, I am certain that a lot of people here agree with you too. Tanisha says my my son constantly needs uh, body doubling. Okay. Prudence, can we get a summary of this workshop at the end? You know, Prudence, I, at the end for everyone who's here right now, I'll send an email follow up that will have a play attention ebook and it is going to uh, cover and just outline everything we discussed today. OK. All right. Now, in addition to those first six cognitive skills, every single one of those have a beginner, intermediate and advanced uh, skill option. So there are certain benchmarks you're going to have to reach before moving up to intermediate and then to advanced. And our artificial intelligence, sheer genius, will actually track your benchmarks and graduate you when appropriate. Now, when you move up into the intermediate and advanced skill options, we tie in more processes that are required for strong executive function. Those include processing speed. So think about yourself or your child, do you know the answer or you understand the information? It just takes you a little bit longer to process that we can increase processing speed. Task switching, that mental flexibility. Impulse control, that is your ability to stop and think and then follow through or give a response. And distractors, although I mentioned we have that one particular activity that works on filtering distractions, we do thread distractors throughout to make certain you're able to filter both auditory and visual distractions. So as you move up into the higher levels of performance, it does get a little bit more challenging along the way. But it's important that we include all of these other processes that are required. Now, in addition to those foundations of executive function, we have a variety of masterclass modules available that you can tie into your program at any time. And those include working memory. So that's like your mental sticky note, being able to hold information on that mental sticky note in order to use that information to complete a task. Auditory processing. So if you say to your child, go to your room, put away your sneakers, bring down your jacket, he'll be able to follow through without you redirecting or reminding. Hand-eye coordination is about small motor control. Social skills, if any of you have a difficult time picking up on social cues and responding appropriately. Spatial memory is remembering where things are located. So if you're constantly losing your keys or your phone or your wallet, that's a great one for you. Mental math, this is more appropriate for individuals in first grade and second grade. So those are addition and subtraction math facts and mindfulness. You know, we hear so much about how mindfulness helps with the symptoms of ADHD, and that is true. However, we can't look at someone with ADHD and say, now I want you to practice mindfulness. Because mindfulness is hard. It's hard for all of us, but especially if we have this constant running mind. So what we do is we give you a visual representation so that we can enhance 
that experience, you'll actually see a lotus flower in the middle of the screen. Once you have your mind in the present moment, you're able to start opening the petal on the flower. If you start thinking, when's my next appointment? What time do I have to pick up the kids? What am I going to make for dinner? That petal will start to close because you're no longer in the present moment. And then you have to bring yourself back in order to continue. Because I know many of you here struggle with that internal dialogue, right? Internal dialogue can be our worst enemy at times where it's making us leave the present moment. It's causing anxiety. So when you can have that guidance and that visual representation, you can actually learn to tame that constant internal dialogue and stay in the present moment, which is obviously going to help you with your attention, with your memory, with your learning processes. Okay. Now, in addition to that mindfulness program called Lotus, I did want to mention we just released a mindful media player which is a separate component of play attention, but you will utilize your body wave technology. And it actually allows you to activate media files, audio or video, with your ability to maintain that present moment, stay in the present moment. As long as you're able to stay in the present moment, you can activate your media file, whether it's a video or audio file, you can activate it. If you start leaving the present moment and your mind starts to wander, your video will stop and you have to focus back in, bring yourself back to the present moment in order to continue. So that's a whole nother program that uh, we can chat about. But if you are interested in learning more, because I know there's so many people that are interested in mindfulness practices and how to enhance that experience. So if you do want more information about our mindful media player, just type in media and I'll make certain that you receive our past webinar recording that specifically talks about that mindful media player because it is really exciting. And we have our own mindful media player uh, library, which will provide you with lots of great videos to help you with your affirmations, gratitude affirmations, breathing exercises. So again, if you do want to learn more about that, just type in media and I'll make certain that you get that information as well. Now, we covered a lot of different cognitive skills that can be addressed within your program. And I mentioned that we are going to assess your needs in order to customize your plan. Um, now, we can do that through a conversation, or some of you may have just done assessments and you want to share those assessments with us. That's great because we can use that information to customize your plan. If you are uncertain and you would like to do an assessment, we do have two assessments available. One is called FOCUS, which is a norm reference test of attentional control. It is computer-based. Uh, it does um, take 20 minutes, and at the end of the 20 minutes, we receive a full report that tells us how you performed compared to the performance of your peers. So we look at different areas of consistency, performance, impulse control, and your ability to deal with distractors, both visual and auditory. So that is focus. It's an objective assessment, and that is available. We also have the brief available, which is more subjective um, because that is an online survey. It is a behavior rating inventory of executive function. It asks you a variety of questions online and it gives us a good snapshot of your executive function or your child's executive function on a day-to-day -day basis. And then we can use this information to actually develop a plan so that we know exactly what we need to work on in order to improve executive function. And remember, that is our end goal. You know, I reviewed a lot of different cognitive skills, uh, attention, stamina, visual tracking, auditory processing. But remember, our end goal is to improve executive function. And you may be thinking, well, executive function is organization and emotion regulation and mental flexibility, and I didn't see those there. Well, in order to control your emotions, right, to improve emotion regulation, you have to be able to pay attention to the situation. 
You have to be able to process the information. You have to have a good memory so you can draw on prior experiences in order to evaluate an appropriate response. And you have to control your impulsivity so that you're not just impulsively responding in that situation. So focus, memory, processing speed, impulse control, all of those skills are what you're working on in every single play attention session. So every time you do a play attention session, you're improving executive function, all of those processes within executive function, because you're developing the foundational skills that are required. So I hope that makes sense. If you have questions, let me know. Now, many of you have questions about uh, the assessments, and uh, the assessments are age-based, Tanisha, so they are norm-referenced. So we do need, if you do want to do an assessment, we do need a date of birth. So that's a good question because they are norm-referenced. And uh, each assessment, if you do want to do the assessments through us, uh, those assessments are available for $50. And uh, we do need about a 40 minute block of time to review the results in order to talk about a customized plan. We want to talk about the results and make certain that uh, we address all of the areas that come up in the assessment. And then using that information, make a concrete plan for your review, because it's great to have an assessment. You know, I have a lot of fa families who will say, well, we have 20 page results. Um, from our neurocognitive psych evaluation, but now what do we do, right? So we want to take that assessment information and make a concrete plan. So you can, uh, KM says, do you do both focus and executive function or do you pick? You know, you can do either. Um, you can do one or the other, or you could do both. Uh, that is completely up to you. I kind of like doing both because then you have an objective view and a subjective. We're looking at attentional control and executive function, and then it gives us a really good overview. But KM, you can decide what's best for you, and we can talk about it a little bit more before you decide if you are interested in assessments. If you do want us to reach out to you about the assessments, um, please type in assessment and I'll make certain that one of our executive function specialists reach out to you either to talk about the assessment further or get you uh, registered for one of those. Uh, yes, Shelly, it is available for both you and your child. Again, any age from five all the way up through adulthood, that is um, the same for both play attention and the assessments. So if you do want more information on the assessments, just type in assessment. So to kind of a summarize the play attention program and what you'll receive, because we've re we've talked about a lot of the different components, um, you will receive everything you need to run your program. So you will have the body wave technology. Remember, that's what's going to activate all the exercises with your attentive state. You'll have your customized neurocognitive training plan where we pinpoint the different cognitive skills. You'll have your full behavior shaping component. And I didn't go into this a lot, but this is so important. If you have a child or a client, an adult who has a lot of self-distracting behaviors like skin picking, nail biting, chewing on their shirt, uh, fidgeting, then we have a full behavior shaping component that will help you learn how to control those behaviors not conducive to good attention. So in addition to cognitive training, we're also going to work on behavior shaping. You'll have a personal executive function coach. You're not going to be alone on this journey. You are going to be assigned a personal executive function coach, one of our coaches here on staff, to assist you every step of the way. So not only is that person going to help you set up your profile, but that person is going to take you through a 90 minute uh, Zoom tutorial to make sure you're real comfortable with everything and uh, make certain that you are ready to start your sessions. And that person is always there to answer questions, look at your data, guide you through the process. That is unlimited support because you have a lifetime membership. So as long as you're using Play Attention, you will have that unlimited support and a lifetime membership. 
Now, there are a lot of people that are asking questions. Please do keep your questions coming um, because I am going to go back through and answer all of these questions, okay? So do, please do keep your questions coming. Now, just a few notes on developing skills. We do recommend you work at least an hour per week and you can break that hour up. It could be two 30-minute sessions. It could be four 15-minute sessions, whatever works best for you personally. You're going to start to see good results after about six weeks of consistent training, um, but those are going to be small steps of improvement. And in order to gain permanency, because that's our end goal, we want to know that not only are you going to have these skills now, but you're going to have them 20 years from now. We have to work to a point of permanency. And that is on average about 40 hours of training. So if uh, you're working that hour per week, I would plan on about 10 months of consistent training. Now, remember, I said you have a lifetime membership. So whether it takes you 10 months or 24 months, we continue working with you and customizing as long as necessary. Even once you graduate the program, if you want to continue using the program for peak performance, you can do that. Your support is always there and you have that lifetime membership. Now, sheer genius, our artificial intelligence, remember, does a lot to guide you through the program so that you will not be overwhelmed. Sheer genius sets your daily curriculum, makes certain that you have that uh, deliberate practice model with your specific goals, tracks and awards points uh, for your goals, manages your reward system, and monitors your progress. So at any point, you can go into your dashboard and you can actually look at all of your progress over time in each of the cognitive skill areas. And this is a good time too to just reach out to your executive function coach and do a progress review with that individual, okay? Now, in order to truly get these outcomes, remember that play attention is going to take consistency and you're going to be working at least an hour per week. You'll start to see good results after about six weeks of consistent training, but we want to work to that point of permanency, which again is about 40 hours total. But you and your executive function coach will review that data around that 40 hour mark and make certain that we graduate you at the appropriate time. Now, there are two programs available, and one is the home system, and the other is the professional system. Both of these programs come with everything we discussed. The only difference between the home program and the professional system is that the home system comes with a user license for two people. If you have more than two family members that you want to enroll, then an additional user license is simply $50. The professional system comes with an unlimited user license. So if you are a professional here and you're thinking, I have 25 clients I could enroll tomorrow, you can enroll all 25 of them. There's no continuing cost for licensing. So the home system comes with two uh, user licenses and the professional version has an unlimited user license. And again, both of those systems come with everything you need to run your program, as well as that lifetime membership. I appreciate all of you so much, and I look forward to seeing you at a future consultation or at a future webinar, or perhaps I'll even be in your tutorial helping you get up and running. Thanks so much, everyone. I appreciate your time. You have a great day.